Welcome to the Power Platform Admin Center. I want to talk to you about all of the settings that you can use to manage any of the environments in the Power Platform. So the first thing you need to do is navigate to admin.powerplatform.com and that's going to bring you here to a list of all of your environments. When you find the environment that you want to start editing settings for, you're going to click the ellipses column right next to the name of the environment and then you're going to click settings. Now this is going to open up a new area where you can access all of the settings. And I mean all of the settings. I started this out by thinking I would be doing a feature comparison between what's available to you in the Power Platform Admin Center and what's available to you in the classic legacy solutions area. Um, and, and very quickly, I realized that that's not the case at all because you can do everything in the Power Platform Admin Center and way more. So. Instead of a feature comparison, I just want to run down where you'll do different things. So here's your settings, and it's organized in a couple different headings. We've got product, business, users and permissions, audit logs, templates, email, integration, data management, encryption, and resources. That covers pretty much everything you're going to need to do in your environments from a system admin perspective. So let's dive in. We've expanded the product here, and then we have a couple areas, behavior, features, languages, privacy, and security. Anytime you see an icon like what you're seeing here next to languages, that means it's gonna open in a new tab and it's gonna open in the legacy settings area. So nothing new with them. That's the same thing you're used to if you're in Dynamics 365 or if you're managing something through the legacy experience, that's the same. So let's take a look at some of the new stuff. First up is behaviors. There's some cool things here. You've got autosave. So autosave by default is turned on. If for some reason you want to turn that off, you would do that here. We've got some formatting information. So how do you want full name to display in the order? So you can select from a couple different options here. Select what works for you. Currency symbol um, and the pricing decimal precision. So you know, a couple standard settings on the right hand panel is display behavior. So you can see you can either show the legacy app to everyone, not just admins, don't do that. Or you can add a welcome screen and then there's lookup behavior. So lots of cool things you can do in the behavior section of your settings at the Power Platform. Now we're going to take a look at the features area. Again, we're still under that product headings. So you're going to click features. And then that's gonna load up some really cool things that you can check out too. So this is where you can turn on or off your AI builder. You can work with embedded content. You can change and manage some of your search settings and you can see all that cool stuff here. There's also help features. So custom help is turned on and you can add your custom help URL here, which is always an awesome idea that's gonna help your users. Now that's features. Let's get back to our settings and keep diving into the stuff that is under the behavior or the product. So languages, again, this has that icon, so it's going to open up in the classic. So nothing different about that. You can manage the different languages in your system. And finally, we have privacy and security. So you can show the privacy statement link. So you just do that by toggling this to on and including a URL. We've got default actions when an error occurs. So this is a nicer spot where I think you can set this for all of your users. Blocked attachments. If you need to add or remove a file extension that's included out of the box in the blocked attachments, you do that here. And then if you want to add any session expirations or inactivity timeouts to your system, you could do that here. All right, we're going to transition now to this business section. Now, notice every single one of these items underneath business has that icon, which means it's going to open in a new tab and it's going to open in your classic legacy settings area, which means there's nothing new here. This is all stuff you can do today. However, some of these wording and the, the language that they use for the labels of what it is are confusing. For example, when I click on calendar, it takes me to fiscal year settings. So I was expecting to see like the service calendar. That's not what shows up. Fiscal year settings does. Regional formatting, what's regional formatting? I had no idea. When you open this, it's your legacy business management area where you can manage all of your business settings. So I know we went through that quickly because there's nothing new here. It's all stuff that you probably already know. You can check out my blog at crmheidi.com. It was posted today, which is February 11th, 2022. And that will walk through what each of these areas does if you're not familiar with them already. So now we're gonna move on to users and permissions. Again, you see a few sections which are gonna open up legacy, so we'll go through those quickly. Application users, 
this is something new. This is something that I don't think we had anywhere before. And this is managing your non-interactive users in the environment, which lets your apps access dataverse data. So this is really important for anyone who's leveraging that type of a user. And you can click the learn more here to learn more information. So let's go back to users and permissions. Business units, nothing new. This takes you to your, your legacy UI for managing your business units. And remember, these are the building blocks of your security system. This is what's gonna separate or show data to specific user groups. Hierarchy security, again, if you have hierarchical security mad models, either positional or hierarchical models, this is where you set that up and configure it. You can also opt different tables or entities in and out of your hierarchy. So now we're into new stuff, license to role mapping. So in my blog, I just copied and pasted what was here directly and linked to the more information. So if defined in your environment, these roles are automatically assigned to users when added to Dataverse based on the license they're assigned. So I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. If a user is added and has a specific license, I want them to inherit this security role. So I thought this was a nice addition that I don't think is possible right now in the classic legacy UI for settings. Uh, it does a little bit of the heavy lifting when you're onboarding new users. Mobile configuration. So, you know, this is interesting. This really just has to do with offline mode. So if you wanna control the amount of data that moves over to a user's device when they're offline, that's where this would be. Um, I think it was a, a slightly misleading nomenclature here, right? I expected to be configuring mobile, not configuring offline capabilities, but still really powerful stuff. Positions. I had no idea what positions was. I was like, did I miss something in legacy UI? No, it's Dynamics 365 for, for human resources, which I have never looked at. But if you have human resources app, you will manage all of your positions in this section here. But again, that's legacy UI. So if you're already using HR, that'll look and feel exactly the same. Then we have security roles, teams and users. Though these live within the Power Platform Admin Center, there's no change in functionality. They'll look a little bit different if you've been using security roles in your legacy UI, but you can come in here in any one of these, open up your security role, and then it's the same way we've always worked with security roles. So you can dive in and check some of that out too. Let's keep going with our tour. We're down to audits and logs. So audit settings, um, I'm gonna just click to open a new tab just so we can see what that is and then head back. So this is really just about your audit logs. This is turning on auditing or turning off auditing by default, it's off. Um, start log access, read logs, and then how long do you wanna retain the logs for? You can see the retention policy by default is forever. So you might wanna change that if you want to change those settings. Audit summary view. It had that icon, which means when I click on it, you can see this just opens up the classic UI. And this is just a list of the audit log. We have entity and field audit settings. That right there tells you that this is a legacy one because we didn't say table and columns. Interesting though, if you click this, it actually opens up your default solution, which I haven't really found a way to do in the new UI. I guess it's here. So Power Platform Admin Center, if you want to access the old UI for your default solution, here's a way you can do it. Entity and field audit settings. From there, within that solution file of your default solution, which obviously is taking a long time to load in my system, you would be able to turn auditing on at the entity or table or field column level. So. I, I thought that was interesting. It wasn't what I expected to see, but here you can see is my default. And then I can just right here on each table, turn auditing on for the entire table or selected columns. I thought that, that was interesting. And finally, system jobs, simply a log of your system jobs. Now we're into templates. I think templates are super self-explanatory. So we're gonna go through these quickly. And you can see they all have that familiar icon, which means it's opening in my old legacy UI access team templates, article templates, contract templates. I, I found it really interesting that that still says contract and doesn't say entitlement. Data import templates, 
document templates, and actually let me back up for a second. Your data import templates is, is actually not opening up the templates. It's opening up your map. So if you want to import data and you want to download that mapping that gives you all of the columns there and column types, you would use that. It's not actually building a template for your data imports. Email signatures, email templates. I think all of it's pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to move on to some of the super fun stuff like email. So we've got email settings, email tracking, mailboxes, and server profiles. Let's take a look at email settings first. Now there are some interesting things in here. By default, a lot of these are turned on. Process emails only for approved users. I think that makes a lot of sense, but maybe there's a use case where you'd want to turn it off. Process emails only for approved queues. Then you can see you've got some other information here. Notifications. When one of these things happens, you send an email to the owner of that mailbox. And that's errors, warnings, information. You might want to turn some of those off. You might want to keep them all on. Notify mailbox owner is off. You could turn it on. Then we have our synchronization methods. So this is setting up our email server profile. Uh, what are your default actions for incoming email? Do you want server side sync? Do you want email router? Same with outgoing, appointments, contacts, and tasks. And those will be the default that each mailbox will inherit when you set it up and turn on all of your email fun stuff. And then you've got some email form actions here at the end. Isn't this cool stuff? I, you know, I, I was suspect, or as the kids say these days, I was a little sus with the Power Platform Admin Center. I thought I was going to like my classic UI, but I don't. I really like this. I think it's really cool. Email tracking. I like this one because it simplifies setting up some things like folder level tracking, which is still a cool thing that people can do. So tracking email conversations. Do we want to use correlation? Use tracking tokens. Hey, we can update our tracking tokens right here. Change my prefix, change the number of digits, all that cool stuff. Turn on folder level tracking. And do you want to track emails sent between people as two different activities? If yes, keep this last one on. If not, change it to no. So cool things, right? Are you getting as excited as I am about this stuff? Mailboxes, just a list of the mailboxes, no different. Uh, and then server profiles. You can manage existing profiles or you can add new server profiles. I haven't looked at this in too much depth beyond what we see right here, but I do notice they have an icon to go to legacy, which makes me think there's something you can't do today in the Power Platform Admin Center that you need to use legacy. But like I said, I, I haven't gone into that much detail yet. So if you have and you know the answer, feel free to add a comment here in this lovely video. We're going to move on to integration. This is where you have document management settings. So that's simply turning your SharePoint integration on and off, which also is where you'll turn your OneDrive on or off if you want to use that. Synchronization. Now synchronization, I think, goes to our, our business management again, which is weird, right? We already saw that once, but this takes me to business management settings as well. I, I'm wondering if that's an error because I, I wouldn't expect that to be synchronization. Going on, Teams integration settings. This is cool. I really like this. It goes to legacy, but I don't think this is in the classic D365 settings. Maybe it is, and I just haven't seen it. So this is really cool. Some of the newer stuff. Do I want to turn on the linking of Dynamics 365 records to Microsoft Teams channels? By default, these are turned off, so you'll turn it on. And then the preview thing. This is so cool. Turn on Microsoft Teams chats inside Dynamics 365. So cool. So you take a look at all of that and turn them on as you see fit for your users. And then Yammer. Um, I haven't configured a Yammer integration in quite some time, but if you're using Yammer and you want to set it up to sync down with your apps, this is where you'll manage that. Now let's move into data management. We're going to go through this one pretty quickly because as you can see, those familiar icons are back. This is all using legacy UI. Auto numbering. If you want to set up your auto numbers for different tables and different columns, you can do that here. Automatic record creation policies, not rules, policies. So you can click on this and you can see um, those are the different rules that will create the new automatic records based on what's coming in on queues or whatever else you're doing. Bulk deletion, data import wizard. I expected when I clicked this to launch the data import wizard. It does not. This is another one that surprised me and I feel like I have to point it out in case you, like me, were expecting it to go there. Um, you can from here, check out your imports and you can import data. I thought it would kind of skip a couple clicks and take me right into the wizard. You can get there, but it's not directly where it takes you. 
Here's your data maps for your data import. Duplicate detection jobs, duplicate detection rules, duplicate detection settings. So everything you need to do to set up and manage those duplicate detection items in your environment. Now keep in mind, it's just like a soft prompt. It'll pop up to your user and say, hey user, this might be a duplicate. Here's what might be the same thing, but they can still override it. So this isn't anything hard and fast that eliminates duplicates, but it does let your users know that they might be adding data that's already in your system somewhere. Field translation, so if you have multi-languages and you want to work on translations, you can export your field translation translations here and then import them with the import tool. Now I did put in my blog, there's a really cool tool in the XRM toolbox that will do that for you, like so much better than if you were gonna do this out of the box yourself. Um, I forget the name of the tool, but I, whoop, I went too fast, um, but you can put it in here. So here's a link to it, Easy Translator. Can't believe I forgot the name of something so easy that works on translation, right? Then we have imports and sample data. Sample data, you really only ever use in a demo environment like what I have here. I can't see any business reason why you would want to turn that on for something for your company, but you can here. We're almost there, guys. All right, encryption. That's just data encryption. So if you have data, encry data encryption information, you can view it here or you can change it here. Um, that's all you have here. It's just a key. So it's between 10 and 100 characters long, just like it says. And the cat and the dog are here and they're excited because we're wrapping up. We have our final setting here, which is resources. All legacy settings. Guess where this goes? For the third time. We're in business management. Clearly, they're telling us this is an important place. So there are a lot of things that you can use here that you should utilize to manage different business settings that are going to show up all over your system. And finally, Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. I guess it just didn't live anywhere else, but this is where you would configure that. Again, it's the legacy UI, so there's nothing different here in terms of functionality. So. That is a very quick overview of all of the things that you can do in the Power Platform Admin Center. I didn't find anything in here, neither did Ruby, that is not available or that is available only in the legacy UI. Everything is there. So I don't know about you, but I'm making the cutover. I'm moving over to Power Platform Admin Center to perform all of my system admin level tasks for Dynamics 365, for Power Apps, for anything in the Power Platform. I think it's great. I hope you do too. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments or shoot me an email. Happy to chat more about it. Thanks.